millions of Americans don't want to work part-time. Amazon said Thursday it will create 30,000 part-time jobs in the U.S. over the next year, nearly double the current number. Of those jobs, 25,000 will be in warehouses and the other 5,000 will be home-based customer service positions. This is in addition to the 100,000 full-time jobs Amazon AMZN, plus 0.19% said it would create over the next 18 months, many of which were planned, according to a separate announcement made in January. Last year, Amazon's worldwide workforce grew by 48% to 341,400 employees. In the U.S., it has over 70 fulfillment centers and over 90,000 full-time employees. Amazon did not respond to request for comment. Seeking more flexibility, American workers are working from home and part-time, but these jobs often come with fewer benefits. In fact, the number of Americans working involuntarily part-time rose 45% since 2007 to 6.4 million, a December 2016 report by the Economic Policy Institute found. It a nonprofit think tank in Washington, D.C., said the increase is almost entirely due to the inability of workers to find full time jobs, leaving many workers to take or keep lower paying jobs with less consistent hours to make ends meet. And more than half, 54%, of the growth in these involuntary part time jobs between 2007 and 2015 were in retail, leisure, and hospitality industries. Dash advertisement dash. There's a prolonged structural shift toward more intensive use of part-time employment, the Economic Policy Institute report found. Aside from the frequent lack of sufficient work hours, these part-time workers must also navigate unpredictable and or variable hours, with their work schedules varying week to week at a rate more than double that of full-time workers, it added. What's more, part-time workers suffer from a lower rate of pay and benefits coverage than full-time workers such as access to health insurance and paid time off. Compared to similar full-time workers, men working part-time earn 19% and women working part-time earn 9% per hour. Don't miss, overworked Americans are stuck in a financial groundhog day. There's no clear association with the implementation of the employer mandate in Obamacare and the time trend in involuntary part-time workers, said Lonnie Golden economics professor at Penn State University and author of that APA report. The employer mandate requires certain businesses to provide health insurance when their employees work a set amount of hours. Golden said the data does not reflect any noticeable increase in involuntary part-time or those working 29 or fewer hours a week. While 3.7% of white Americans work part-time involuntarily, 6.8% of Hispanic workers and 6.3% of black people work part-time, but would rather be full-time, the report concluded. Perhaps not surprisingly, involuntary part-time workers tend to earn less than their voluntary part-time counterparts. Approximately 40% of involuntary part-time workers report a total family income of less than $30,000 compared with just 18% of the latter and 29% of the population as a whole, according to an earlier report, A Tale of Two Workforces, The Benefits and Burdens of Working Part-Time, published in 2015 by Rutgers University. More than four out of every five involuntary part-time workers says it's hard to save for retirement and about seven out of every ten say they earn less money than they and their family need to get by and pay bills. The persistence of such large numbers of involuntary part-time workers is an indicator of underlying weaknesses in the U.S. labor market, experts say. Involuntary part-time workers are twice as likely as voluntary part-time workers to be forced to work on weekends and holidays, and to be given unfavorable work schedules and job assignments, the Rutgers report concluded. In 2015, then-President Barack Obama introduced measures to require U.S. companies to pay overtime to millions of salaried workers, but that move was halted by a federal judge last December. Some companies introduced overtime for those workers, regardless, 